Welcome back everyone. We've taken a little sabbatical for a while, just been really busy, but Happy New Year. I am super excited to be back and uh, working on another pair of shoes project with y'all and just bringing you along on this adventure. Now, this pair of shoes or boots that we got are probably one of the oldest pair of boots. Yeah, I'd probably say they're the oldest pair of boots we've ever worked on. They are 80 plus, maybe even pushing close to 100 years old because it's in 2022 now. So yeah, I think these are around the 20s, uh, maybe 30s around there. But, so a little backstory on these. Lady sent these in. They were her great grandfather. She may have even said great, great grandfather. And he was uh, an old farmer and these were his farm boots. They are caked in dust and these things were in uh, the attic for decades. And you're gonna be able to tell once we start uh, working on these exactly how fragile this boot is. But um, we just, they don't wanna wear them. They just want to have the bottoms redone, preserve the leather so that it's a family heirloom. So let's get out to the uh, workshop and let's get started on this. All right, so here's the boots. Um, as you can tell, they are old and they are in horrible condition. You can just see, I mean, very fragile. Uh, I don't want to pull too much or in this condition without them being uh, washed, clean, wet, moisturized, so we can start making the leather a little more supple. But I don't know, they could be some sort of red wing, some sort of thousand miles. They don't look like thousand miles. And um, I don't know. If you can identify these old vintage pair, then drop it down in the comment and let us know. Um, has a almost like a old waxed uh, canvas throat lining up here. So yeah. All right, so as I mentioned a second ago, we've got to get these things moisturized. Uh, I don't even want to put them on the, uh, the stand and start pulling and prying because things can start to crumble. So let's go wash, wet, clean, moisturize, all of that before we get started. Okay, so we have put these underneath the water and washed a lot of that kind of residual dirt off the surface, but these things are so brittle, we're actually gonna give them a little bit more of a bath and let them soak for a little while. And it's kind of a balancing act because we wanna soak it long enough to bring in moisture, but we don't wanna soak old leather long enough that it actually starts to turn slimy. So uh, we have to constantly monitor these things and um, get them a little bit more supple. Look at this, how brittle it is. But soaking it will actually help to keep, uh, especially around the welt. This was just held on by these old nails. But I don't have to worry about it now because it'll help to keep uh, this from ripping when I uh, replace the welts and um, all the guts of it. You can see the age just by, this is after it's been soaked, um, just crumbling. But then again, sole leather is the most brittle of all of them because it's so hard. So uh, the uppers should be nothing like this. So he apparently had this, um, had a half sole put on here and they was just, it, it looks like it was stitched because here's the stitch holes, but they also put these old iron nails uh, all across. So it was just, it was a very kind of primitive. It wasn't uh, really cut out. It was just laid on top and, and um, kept these old farm shoes going. Cork.
So I don't know if you can see, but there are actually three rows of stitches that are actually holding the gimming on. Um, two on the inside of the wall, one on the outside of the wall. So this thing was, no wonder it lasted this long, uh, but it finally, it gave up. So we've got the new insoles made, gimming on them. And remember I told you that they actually were stitched on three times. We're gonna do that here on this patching machine. Just a reminder, this leather is insanely brittle. When I was actually putting these hills in, I mean, these, these tacks along the backside, I had to use the original holes because if I put another hole in, it would probably start to crumble. So I'm reusing those holes. There's actually a lot more we would like to do to these shoes that we've had to go down the list and say, that's not gonna be possible because of the condition of the leather. It's just old leather is very, very brittle. So we've got the new welts on here and these things are literally holding the thing, these uh, boots together, which is a good thing because there's not gonna be any more shifting, which could cause it to crumble. And that's a good thing. So these welts literally are like the glue holding these things together. So put the shanks in there, some cork, and then we'll move on to the soles. These will be our hill rands. They will continue on back around here and leaves a little space back here for the uh, um, shank to go in. So we'll dye these and then nail these on. So we wanted to keep the original shanks just to keep some of the original parts as, um, if we could. And believe it or not, uh, for being farm boots, these shanks are actually in really good shape. They're covered in rust, so we sanded the rust down so we could uh, put some glue on it. But these are in fine shape, and since these aren't going to be worn, they're just for sentimental purposes, we're going to keep them. So I'm not sure if they had hot cork back in those days. So we are going old school with regular old cork, old fashioned cork.
All right, so this is what I'm most excited about. When you uh, saw us taking these apart, you might've noticed that the top lifts were actually a pair of old cat's paw. You can't get these very much. You, we had to actually get this pair off of eBay and the brand's been around since the early 1900s. They were bought out by Built Right back in the 60s, which then was bought out by Vibram. Um, but they are a old brand of top lift that is, uh, if you're into shoes, you've heard about Cat's Paw. And they're very vintage and they've got a rich history in shoes. And so we're gonna replace those on here. Now, the only difference between what we get and what came off of them is the size of the heel. Now, these are actually the exact same size and style, except for we can only get a whole heel versus one that's probably about half that thickness. So that stack block, we're not gonna have to build it as much. We'll probably use one layer of leather, and then this will take up the majority of it. But it is the same size. It was an originally a 11, 12, and that's what we were able to get a hold of off of eBay. All right, so we actually thought about trying to restitch some of this. It had actually been stitched over at some point. Um, I don't know, maybe another cobbler or maybe by the gentleman himself, but it actually had some double stitches in here. We were gonna try to pull some of these stitches and uh, restitch it, but this already had started to crack. And when I started to remove one stitch, it started to deteriorate even more. So I was like, just stop. And um, yeah, we're gonna have to forego that portion. All right, so we've got our cat's paws. We're gonna clean these. We've got our new heel blocks on and we have to clean these to make sure that the glue will actually adhere to rubber. Sometimes you get a little bit of grease from the manufacturing process. And since these are so old, we're gonna use acetone, strip that off, and then we can actually rough it up. But um, these things are just about as old as the, uh, the shoes or the boots themselves. And like I said earlier, cat's paws went out around in the 50s, the 60s. Uh, but 50s and before, that was their heyday. So I uh, got acetone on them, let's put some glue on them and let's stick these on. All right, so we're gonna put some of these uh, nails along the waist. Now, the original had these. 
If you remember when we uh, had a half sole and they actually had nails going across holding on the half sole, that obviously wasn't original because the half sole wasn't on there. Um, but this was, now we don't know if these continued all the way around because it had a half sole on it and when we got it off it was so worn that we couldn't even tell if there were originally holes where the nails would be, but we do know that it was through the waist, so that's what we're going to stop at. So this hardware is covered in rust. We originally thought about trying to replace it, but back to the stitching, this is too fragile. If I tried to pull this out, it would probably just start disintegrating. So we're gonna to try to knock some of this rust off and get them cleaned up. All right, so we're gonna hydrate these things now. We're gonna be using Saphir Leather Lotion. It's mink oil based, and we're not gonna be putting pigment into this because really there's no point. We're just wanting to hydrate these things. They are old. I think I've said that before, right? Uh, 80 years plus old, 100 years old, and so we just want to condition, condition, condition. Okay, so remember we put water on these initially just to clean them and to uh, get that initial break in so we can work on them but the problem with soaking thing leather and water is once it dries out it actually hardens the leather again so we had a fine window that we had to work in and uh, now we don't want to use water we want to put a permanent solution and that's why we're going to use the uh the leather lotion so Now here's the uh, the fun thing about this. You really can't too, put too much of this stuff on because the leather is gonna take in what it wants to take in. And a lot of times you put this in, the longer it sits, the more it just absorbs into the leather. So if it's real dry, love it. All right, so we have wrapped up this pair of old, old vintage boots. Now, just a quick little reminder, if you uh, like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, notification bell, and share this with your friends. We've been away from YouTube a little while, so uh, we want the algorithm to give us a little bit of love. Now, also just a little reminder about these boots. I can't say it enough. These things were old and fragile, and that's the reason we didn't go through and do a lot of work on the uppers, because it, it just, it wouldn't even take. The machine would tear through this leather like it's paper, and we want to preserve these um, instead of trying to just <laughs> obliterate them. So we wanted to focus on the things that we could do, clean off a little bit of the hardware, and then just soak this with some Saphir leather lotion, um, it's like liquid gold for your leather. So, hey, what do we do on these? New insoles. We had to stitch the gimming on just like the original using three stitches, put a brand new welt on there, and then rebuilt the hills um, and just went with a Martin Gebruder uh, German pit tan leather on these. And then we put the, uh, the nails back through the waist because we didn't go all the way around, just a reminder, that we weren't sure if the original had them all the way around and we don't want to just guess. We want to go by just what we could see. That's why we did this. And I think these are going to last, especially with that lotion there, I think these are going to last for a long time. They're not being worn. And uh, for the top lift, we did go with the cat paws. Now we had to search out on eBay for some vintage pair of cat paws because they're out of production, but the originals had them and we want to put them back on. So. Hey, I hope y'all like this. Until next time, y'all have a good one.